Hey guys, and welcome back to the Room 57 YouTube channel. It's been a hot minute since we did anything but a shop update, so here we go. We have a 2023 Ninja 650. It's not very often I have a customer drop off a bike for a tune. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to take my time and video. Uh, so this bike was dropped off for a Dino Tune air filter installation. He already installed an aftermarket Delkovich exhaust, including the header, so it has no cat. Uh, so this should be a fairly simple, straightforward. We're going to go ahead and get a baseline this morning. I uh, got it on the dyno, got the sniffer in. I'm going to strap it down and we're going to just get baseline numbers as it rolled in off the street. Then we're going to go ahead and install a K&N filter, customer supplied. Uh, I believe, if I remember right, these have a baffle in the airbox we need to pull. And then I need to get the ECU out of the airbox and we will flash this sucker and see what we can do with it. It is his first bike. He's been loving it all year. Excuse the mess of the shop, but uh, let's see what we can do with this thing. Alright folks, and I apologize for the really annoying loud hissing. I need to figure out a way to quiet that. That is our air sniffer. Uh, so it takes samples of the exhaust using a vacuum driven by compressed air. The compressed air is the hissing you're hearing. The problem I have right now is I'm not getting a good wideband reading. Uh, it's reading pinned out lean and I don't think it's pinned out lean. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get this baffle popped uh, so I can get a better reading 
out of the actual exhaust itself uh, and we'll go from there but right now we're sitting at like 60 horsepower all right folks so hopefully I get an O2 reading this time so what I did is there is a baffle in this pipe I went ahead and I have an M8 drill tap combo what I do is I went ahead and straight in the middle of that baffle where there's a flat plate I drilled M8 straight through and it tapped behind it so that when I'm done I can run an M8 button head bolt back in there close it up and it works just the same as it did before but now I can get my O2 sample because he wants to leave the baffle in this bike uh, if we were removing the baffle I wouldn't have to do that but he wants to leave the baffle we got to do it As you can see, there is a uh, dramatic air fuel difference between these. Let's go ahead and spread this up. So this one is taking the sample post baffle. This is taking the sample pre baffle. That's why your sample source is critical. And in all honesty, 0 0.88, 0 0.89, 0 0.90, 0 0.90, 0 0.90, 0 0.89, the tune's freaking sweet. Uh, the air fuel is probably right around where I would want it. I might pull a little out, we'll see. But uh, I gotta see what all restrictions are in this behemoth. Uh, probably a decent bit. But we seem consistent on power. Do get rid of that. Yeah, so we're dead consistent on power. They're all within such close range, it's not even color coding them. Uh, but we're at uh, 61.3 horsepower to start out. And a peak torque. Let's just go down here and look at peak torque. Peak torque 41.89 at 5700. And it makes it again in a little wave at 7022. Alrighty folks, we've gone ahead and popped the air box up. I did note that this thing does have two different length stacks from the factory, which is interesting. Uh, it'll give it, the nature of that is to give it low end torque on one cylinder and high end performance on the other. It kind of sacrifices a little of each. Uh, I really think this thing would do best with a pair of short stacks, but at the same time, it's an all-around street bike, so I don't really see a need to change that. Now, I do have his new filter here. Typically, k &N is not an upgrade, to be honest, but there is the stock filter. It's a little dirty, but you can see some light through it. It's got a lot of pleats. There's the k &N. It is starting to look more and more like a knockoff sprint you can see a decent amount of daylight in it and it's got a lot bigger pleats but less of them so this is going to filter less but it'll do good for fine dirt because it's oiled yeah. than the stock filter and i have a feeling it will actually flow more which is surprising for K&N. so we're going to go ahead and get that swapped out pull the ecu out pull any restrictions out of this thing that i can locate in the tune-up and see what we make all right, folks, and we are done with the reflash. There was a decent bit of restrictions in the secondary throttle blades, and as always with Kawasaki, they yank timing like a lunatic up top. So we've gone ahead and done that. We didn't do anything to the fueling except for unify the maps and segregate the cylinders. So uh, we're unified by gear, but we're still segregated by cylinder. So we should be ready to rock and roll on that. I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple pulls. We're gonna see where we're at. We may lose power because the tune is going to be off now. So the fueling was actually pretty accurate 
to begin with with just an exhaust stuck on this. So uh, just an FYI, if you want to stick an exhaust and a stock filter on a 23 Ninja, your tune's pretty spot on. <laughs> like, mm -hmm, I'd run the hell out of that. Uh, it's not necessarily going to need a tune unless you want to de restrict. So I'm going to go ahead and get you guys set up and we're going to make a couple pulls here. Alright, so we made one more foot pound of torque and the exact same horsepower. Now we didn't make any fuel changes, it actually went richer. So it shows honestly that filter's not flowing so great, but down low it got leaner. And way up top it got leaner and it carried longer. So before it was nose diving. I gotta go push a button. Before it was nose diving hard at about 8,500. Now it's nose diving at about 9,800. Uh, it's carrying out quite a bit longer, so he'll be able to scream a little higher, and it's making the torque a little sooner. So I went ahead and made some fueling changes, sprinkled some timing in there. We're gonna see what she does, what she likes, what she doesn't like. Uh, it may want more fuel, it may want less fuel than where I normally target. Normally on these, I target anywhere between 0.88 lambda and 0.9 lambda. Uh, it was running at like 0.85 down low, and in the mid-range it was at like 0 0.85, 0 0.84, and up top it tickled 0.93. So we're going to go ahead and get that all cleaned up, see what she likes, and we'll make a couple more pulls. Alright folks, well it didn't record that, uh, but it's just it going vroom again. Uh, as far as the dyno goes, so I did get an erroneous reading on torque. Uh, I don't know if I had a hiccup in the reading for like a split freaking second, but when I initially hit the throttle, for some reason it ate, read 81 foot-pounds of torque, which is not true. Uh, it actually made, I believe it's 43 foot-pounds of torque and 63.6 horsepower. So there's 3.6 horsepower gain, which is roughly a 5 to 6 percent gain. Actually, it's, yeah, it's right around 6 percent gain. Now, doesn't sound like much, but that's 6 horsepower on a 100 horsepower bike. That's 12 horsepower on a Gen 2 Hayabusa, close to, about 10 horsepower on a Gen 2 Hayabusa, so it's about on par with the expectation. you got to remember that percentage gains are the big thing when you get to a little bitty bike like this. I'm not going to see 10, 12 horsepower gains out of a 60 horsepower bike. That's impossible. Well, it's not impossible. It's improbable. <laughs> From a basic tune and an air filter, you're not going to see 10 plus horsepower because that would be like a 15% power gain. Uh, 
hell, I've seen 20 horsepower out of a tune on certain bikes. Those certain bikes made almost 200 to begin with, so that'd be a 10% gain. 20 horsepower on this would be a 33% gain, so keep that in mind. Uh, but on typical average, I see about 64 to 65 horsepower out of these bikes when they're tuned, and somewhere in the neighborhood of 44 or 45 foot-pounds of torque. So we're looking pretty good on par. Uh, we are doing this from scratch. I don't have any of my old tunes anymore, uh, but it's basically the same thing as the motor pickle was that Amos had. Uh, it did like the timing a lot, uh, so I went ahead and sprinkled just a little bit more in there. Uh, I tried doing the crackle pops bangs. That don't work. Uh, he's obviously got the pair blocked off on this thing, so all it did was make it smell like gas in here. So I turned that back off as well. We're gonna see what she does. Hopefully we can make right around 64 horsepower would be nice 65 would be really good. Not bad, but I forgot to turn on the sniffer. Uh, let's see. It leveled out the lean spot like I expected. It leveled out the lean spot in the back like I expected. It brought down the... Yeah, it 
it's actually probably pretty close. I'll run it again with the sniffer. But we're looking pretty good and we're sitting on gains of from that run to the previous. Not a whole lot changed. It picked up half a horsepower and like one foot pound of torque. It picked up half a horsepower and half a foot pound of torque. We're nickel and diamond it now to try and get the last little bits out of this thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Somehow I zoomed way in. Yeah, we're, we're nickel and diamond the last bits out of this thing. It does pull good out to like 10,100. I put the limiter out at 10,002. Uh, yeah, we're, we're doing pretty good. The reason for that torque reading earlier is that we made torque sooner and this little bitty hard compound tire I never strapped these little things that tight made it spin a little that's why you saw me stand on it there for a second trying to plant the tire for a second so we're doing pretty darn good I'm pretty happy with it as is uh, the drivability is much better I've got it cruising at like lambda stoic uh, and then Outside of cruising, everything's like 13.8, 13.9. Trying to get economy out of this thing because he does commute it. Uh, but we're sitting pretty good. I am happy with this tune as is. I'm going to cool it, make another pull, just double check the fuel. And we are going to put this thing together and call this a day, guys. All right, folks, and this is your reference. Uh, so the blue line down here on the bottom side, that's your torque after. See, it carries further and it makes a decent bit more let's see right here we got a margin of three foot pounds three foot pounds but out the back here we got a margin of 13 foot pounds more uh, up here we're gonna Chris more this horsepower gains we are plus 13 horsepower there but in all honesty and true gains, I'm gonna say right at about three horsepower. But the biggest thing is where it gained the horsepower and how it gained the horsepower. We got more song to it. The top speed on this when it came in was 112. Now we're pulling to 138. Uh, I'm pretty happy with what we got going on here, guys. The tune is decent. I will ride it and see if I feel any difference. I didn't get to ride it before, so it'll be all in his opinion. Uh, something to keep in mind here, folks. Anyone who knows anything about dynos will know this. Correction factor. SAEJ1349-2004. This is the piss you off correction factor. I'll do the next pair of pulls in standard, which is what our dyno previously ran and what a lot of people, including Dino Jet run, and show you what it uh, makes in that. Alright folks, so these are going to be in standard. Uh, I don't care about the power numbers, that's why I switched it up. Just to show you the difference between standard and SAE, because people say it's a minuscule no difference. And then I'll also do a set in uncorrected and show you the difference. Uh, so all I care about is air fuel right now, I don't care about the power numbers. I just need to tweak the last couple of spots. So Here we go.
see what do we got going on here so that was the last pull was horsepower correction factor 1.000 no correction factor so I'm going to overlay all this Why do I have four runs open? Hold on. Alright, so we have SAE, all the same temperature, all the same humidity, all the same megapascals, all that, nothing fiddled with. SAE, which is what I tune in, 63.94. Standard second pull, 65.66. Close to what people expect with an extra two foot pounds of torque almost. That's standard J607. You do, you do. There, now you can see it. And then none, no correction factor, as observed. So correction of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 63.46 and 43.97 foot-pounds. So basically the same as I made on SAE. So my SAE correction factor is about the same as uncorrected right now because, well, it's really close to 52 degrees and really close to freaking the perfect humidity and the pressure is actually below sea level right now so it all makes sense but yeah that's how the correction factors work just so y'all know oh and our fueling by the way 0.84 lambda at peak torque so i always go fatter at peak torque to bring peak torque up and then a little lean back up and we are 0 0.94 0 0.93 0 0.92 0 0.94 0 0.93 0 0.92 all the way across, which is about 13.2, 13.3 AFR for those of you who uh, watch Chris Moore and them who don't tune in Lambda. So we are spot on. This tune is done, guys. We're going to go ahead and put the fairings and everything back on. I about flipped over because an air hose. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to edit this video. It's going to take me probably an hour and get it posted alongside of the shop update that I did yesterday. Later.